It's me, Spamton G. Spam. You, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Lister. Quality entertainment. Honey. You must be lucky winner. Have fun. I'm not like Make you file for bankruptcy. Coursework, financial aid, followers, copyright strikes, and more. You are listening to the life of a content creating college student podcast starring Wayne Z0207 and Charlotte Waite. And good evening, folks. My name is Colton W. Hurst, also known as Wayne Z0207 on the internet. And I welcome you to this podcast. Hello, I'm Charlotte. I'm back. Yes, welcome back, Charlotte. I'm glad you're feeling well. Thank you, yes, and I'm so glad we are joined today by... The Director of DICE. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Jennifer Wilson. I'm the Executive Director of DICE, like Colton said, here at Oregon Tech. I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Of course, and what does the Director of DICE do? What does DICE do? So, DICE actually stands for Diversity, Inclusion, and Cultural Engagement. And so, my job at Oregon Tech is to sort of help us create... um, a better climate or atmosphere so that everybody feels welcome and included and can just thrive at Oregon Tech and realize all of their potential. Yes, of course. And I assume that you're pretty happy with it, aren't you? Yeah, I love it. Mm-hmm. It's great here. Yes. And in an earlier episode, I did mention that we went to the Snowflake Parade. You happened to be one of the people that went with, weren't you? I was. The Snowflake, or Snowflake Parade was lots of fun. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. That was quite an amazing time. It? it was a little cold, but fine. yeah, a little bit cold. Yeah, like I said, I had to wait for mom to bring by my warm clothes. I was yeah. out in parking lot G, wasn't it? Yes, I believe that so. we had a frozen Colton for a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely don't want to go through one of those situations again. <laughs> That's for certain. That's lame-o. <laughs> oh, you love and you learn, huh, Cole? Anyways, in this podcast, we talk about what it's like to be a content creator and a college student both at the same time. And I heard you had experience with content creators. I actually have worked with a lot of students who are also content creators. Um, Colton and I had a conversation once. So my former institution was actually part of a Netflix documentary called Last Chance You. And so we had quite a few students who also created content and had their own pages and media, social media sources um, where they promoted their music, their art, um, and of course their football careers. Um, but it was, and, and their celebrity on the show. So it was really fun. And they all had, um, they all sort of had this different identity that they had besides their student and their athlete. And so it was really fun to watch them grow and to build them, to build their brand. And so, yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it's all about. And it's all about helping out the community all together. Yeah. That's what mainly inspired me to be a content creator. And I've done so many amazing things with what I've done as a student. Yeah, I love the idea behind your podcast and how it brings awareness to so many parts of different students' identity. Oh, yes. It all comes together like a piece of cake. <laughs> we are so very excited to have you on our, our chat today, and, and thank you so much for joining us again, especially with your, your depth of knowledge and your experience. Also, as a content creator, I know uh, Colton is very excited, and I'm very excited for you to, for you to be on today's um episode to to kick us off let's let's start off with a question about what are two things that went well for you throughout the week my professors and friends would stick by me on my off days they made me feel safe and welcome and i have never encountered a community that was so diverse and so supportive it was clear to me that my professors and friends genuinely cared about me and wanted to make sure i was doing okay they gave me advice ensured i was taking care of myself even checked in with me from time to time staying on top of things. Claire included. How oh, nice. Their dedication motivated me to strive for my best and remain focused on my goals. And I'm incredibly grateful for their continuous support. I've also been getting more assistance and well, I'm starting to understand some of the techniques better. However, I can't necessarily make the best welds yet. It's going to take more practice to get to where my skills need to be. Clint's Cowboy Cuisine, shout out to you, is working to fix that. However, he has a friend who's been welding since he was 12 and he's been trying to get a shop set up. Wow. He's also reminded me that I have rel- my relatives I can depend on and my other close friends who know how to weld. My welding class is looking better and better day by day. Nice. What was the best piece of advice you were given this week? 
Well, the best piece of advice I was given. Oh boy, that was tough. But I think it was during one of my therapy sessions. And this, this can apply for other students too. It, it can occasionally involve technical difficulties or perhaps maybe assignments coming up. You, you just kind of feel a bit angry at the situation. Well, I was taught earlier this week that anger is a secondary emotion. You have to figure out what's causing the anger or emotion that you towards. Of course, anger is an emotion, but it's less significant. It is there. Right, so you're angry because you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Questions get Yes, and so that, that alone has helped me today. I was feeling a little bit confused, frustrated at one of my math classes. Lots of people were looking at functions and being able to find different functions using one plugin and then moving on to a different. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, you take G over 2 and then you find f of x with the same result you had by plugging in that specific number. So it's sort of like you're plugging in something and then you're getting something out of it. Yeah, and how did you use that advice um, regarding anger to help solve that? I identified the emotions of frustration and confusion. Mm -hmm. so nice. Yeah, yeah, great. And that's helping you with your emotional IQ as well as your intellectual IQ, huh? And of course, we have a follow-up question. Prepare to ask it for me. So how did these things help you grow, and what did you gain out of it? Well, for starters, I realized that I'm going to need as much support as I can get if I'm going to succeed as a student and as a creator. I'm so grateful to have that support from my colleagues, collaborators, and friends. That is what inclusive, in, inclusive, inclusivity is about. It's a pretty tough one to say. But I'm, it is. It is. Yeah. One, one of the most unique things about me is I'm one of many unique creators at OIT who's neurodivergent and who is doing his own thing. See, part of what inspired me to do content creation was I was originally doing charity content for autism awareness charity organization for personal entertainment. We raised over $4,000. And so that is kind of what stuck, stuck out to me. And so after that time where I fundraised, it created content as part of that organization's leader. I decided I could go off and do my own thing as a freelance. That's what stuck out to me most as a freelance. Doing it as a CEO wasn't bad, but being a freelance creator gives me more freedom to choose what content I want to produce and the information I want to receive. I think I'm a very unique student here at Oregon Tech, would you agree? Definitely. Can, yes. you, can you tell me from your perspective what it means to be very diverse at Oregon Tech? Yeah, so one thing that, one conversation that Cole and I have had before is, you know, here at Oregon Tech, we don't think of diversity in necessarily just being race, ethnicity, and those sorts of things. We also think of neurodivergency as being a form of diversity. We don't see disability as an inability, but rather just another opportunity for us to see things through a different perspective and for us to sort of engage with other people and really get to know how other people navigate this world. So I think that at Oregon Tech, the more we recognize um, how much diversity we do have, and the, the more we can come to appreciate all of yeah. those people on our campus. And I feel like uh, Colton has expressed that he's had a very wonderful and supportive experience here and a good community. So I'm really happy to hear that. Right? Yes, of I course. Know. I'm so grateful for all the support that I've gotten over the course of my career in college so far. It's the same experience that I am proud of. Skills. Yeah, you have. And, and you create those skills a lot of the times based on like the setbacks that you've come um, Right? Right. So what was one setback that you've come across this week? You know, to be frankly honest, my bad mood from earlier seemed to continue over this week. I felt as though I'd been struggling with my classes even though I'm technically not. I've talked with the professors and expert guides in understanding the material and my situation. From what I have seen, they are very understanding of what's been going on. Mm. Our students can also struggle with this, so it's nice to know that professors are here to ensure that students succeed in and one of the professors, not going to be mentioning any names, they, they are going through a little bit something similar. They are dealing with a little bit of anxiety, needless to say. So it's not just the students, it's everyone. Mm -hmm. It's everyone here at Oregon. And I think one of you can relate to that, correct? Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. We all experience some of those same emotions and fears and anxiety, like even in my job. I often wonder if I'm doing things right or if I could be doing them better or if I'm leaving somebody out of the conversation. And so I definitely can relate to feeling anxiety about just your everyday. Of course. Yeah. Indeed. And how does that help you cope to cope with your emotions, knowing that other people are going through the same thing? Not only is it important to recognize the signs of mental illness, but the signs of burnout, too. Sometimes burnout can be the root cause of mental illnesses, such as depression and her anxiety. According to the Center of Collegiate Mental Health, the number of students seeking help at campus counseling centers increased by almost 40% between 2009 and 2015. The average annual caseload for a typical full-time college counselor is about 120 students, with some centers averaging more than 300 students per counselor. Burnout is a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion caused by prolonged stress, and it can lead to depression and anxiety. It can be caused by a variety of factors, including an overwhelming workload, lack of support, and feelings of isolation. You know, as a, as a college student and a content creator, I feel like that's something that I've struggled with a little bit more because I'm constantly at work and I'm constantly busy, per mm-hmm. se. So yeah. it's hard for me to get that social interaction, in, which I have been doing better at lately. Oh, good. Yeah. That's great. Hey, could you probably share with us what you did? What did you do as a college student this week? As a college student, that is a pretty good question. In Chemistry 204 this week, We experimented with ionic versus covalent conductivity. In the lab, we found that substances such as sodium chloride and potassium chloride would light up a light bulb. This is because both are found in the first two groups of the periodic table of elements. These groups are alkali and alkaline earth metals. Therefore, the combination of the two produced an ionic charge, conducting electricity in distilled water. A blank solution. And therefore, wait. Well, sucrose was the experiment's cutoff point. I had to see where I was at with this. Every other substance did not generate electricity. And in MFG 103, I continued to do TIG welding and experimented with filler metal. My only issue with it is it keeps oxidizing and melting off. This results in the metal getting shorter. I'm effectively working to resolve this problem. My dad is searching for additional resources that can help me weld. Like, for example, he got me a, a welding manual. And so, and so it outlines the different processes and different materials and settings that I could, could use to mm-hmm. help better my welding skills. Oh, good. And then in, in speech 111, we dove into the informative speech. Its purpose is to enlighten rather than persuade. And I have a good idea of the topic that I'm going to be talking about. Content creation was one of those ideas, but I think I'm going to save that for my persuasive speech. Oh, nice. I'm going to persuade others to get into content creation themselves, all Uh-oh. while balancing a nice schedule. So that way we have more people doing amazing things and benefiting the community overall. I believe content creation is just such a wonderful thing and it can change so many lives. And to top it all off, in Math 111 we had our first exam, which I aced with flying colors. Oh, Congratulations. Never had a doubt. There, there was no doubt. It, it was obvious by day one. <laughs> Day one just simply made it way too obvious. I got I got plenty of practice in with the Dugopolsky book. I reviewed questions that were on the quiz as they were the study guide for the exams, which was the study guide for the final, and just straight up decimated it within the first five minutes. Oh, nice. Oh, amazing. And I did the same with my chemistry quiz, except I, I took my sweet time and showed off as per usual with the chemistry quizzes. <laughs> And there was an extra credit question which asked me to calculate fractional abundance. Oh. And this is related to isotopes. And so I had to crack, calculate the abundance percentage of unknown elements, and I did exactly just that. What wound up happening was I got a 51.5 out of 50 on the quiz. <gasps> Excellent. Excellent. Look you at know, that extra credit. You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit higher, like, let's say five points for that matter. If I had gotten that, my grade in the chemistry class would have been 100.55%. Wow. I have gotten this before in some of my earlier classes in high school, such as choir, but I've Mm -hmm. never gotten that in college before. Congratulations. Not Not sure if I'll be able to pull it off here, but I mean, it's kind of unique to see what will happen next. Not an easy feat in Oregon's head. 
<laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Or in college, for that matter. Mm-hmm. Yes. And what, um, so what is your, your speech going to be, if not content creating this upcoming my, speech? My speech is going to be focusing on alternate universes and timelines. I've always been Whoa. fascinated by space and time, per mm-hmm. se. And I believe there are alternate universes and alternate outcomes. For example, in one universe, I might have not needed that extra motivation, and so this podcast might have not been created in the first place. Who knows? Ah, that's crazy to think about, huh? Yes, I, be- I believe in alternate universes. I believe in alternate timelines because there are so many possibilities that we can delve into yeah. because our universe is infinitely expanding, mm. infinitely just increasing mass and increasing space. And there's just so many timelines and all of that cultivates into the multiverse. Wow. Um, well, Colton, what can you do to enhance your studies based on your experiences? Always remain curious and get some additional research in whenever you can. It's also a good idea to brush up on concepts you already know so you don't forget the prerequisites of what you're currently delving into. Mm-hmm. This shows you're retaining the previous material and are on track to learn what's next on your plate. And the same can be... I can exemplify this by, by practicing the Dugopolsky book. There's this college algebra book that I originally purchased for Math 111. It was made by Dugopolsky. And these problems are a bit tougher than what the professor hands out, typically. And so this is good exercise for the mind. And I believe that kind of exercise is good. Especially for students who are a bit neurodiverse or have a disability of some kind. Wouldn't you agree? Definitely. Um, we should always be practicing and learning new things. I would say college is a place to expand your mind. Yes. So, what did you do as a content creator this week? Ooh, this is going to be fun. And I, I know that this needs to be said. So, please, please, please listen carefully, fans. There is something that I wish to address. It is regarding creator integrity and honesty. On Instagram, I have become more popular as of late with almost 150 followers. Congratulations! 140 to be precise. With popularity comes recognition for your work. A couple of fans have asked me if they could use my work in some motivational pieces they were working on. In return, they wanted to pay me by a credit. Hmm. Interesting. And so it's kind of interesting how all this plays out. And yeah. of course, there are some creators who get paid for their work, but they usually get paid when they become more famous, per se. So my case is a bit unusual. Yeah. It looks like I'm getting these offers early on. Okay, yeah. What did you do about it? In response, I said these words, and this also goes for any of my followers on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. In terms of using my work to help your own content, I don't care about payment. Anything financial is none of my concern. There is no requirement to pay me for letting you use my work. This is because, one, my banking details are nobody's business. It's just like any of your personal information. It isn't supposed to be given out to any stranger, even a fan. It's important to keep details like this a secret. That way, hackers do not get into your account and steal confidential info. Yeah, or all your money. Yes, especially all your money, even if it's going towards college. According to a recent report, victims of identity theft can lose an average of $1,100, making it important to keep banking information confidential and secure. And two, payment is never any consolation if you aren't putting in clean, honest work. The only time any creator would be paid and should be paid would be from ad revenue. Payment is, can only be truthful and honest if it's your work. The most significant thing to remember is that as a creator, you must have integrity and honesty in your work. This means that if you are using my work, all that I ask is that you acknowledge me as the original creator. By citing the original creator, you are showing respect for their work, which can also benefit your own work. When you reference the original creator, you are helping to create a sense of community and collaboration in the creative space. And additionally, referencing the original creator can help increase their work's visibility and recognition, helping to further their reach and success. So it's not just you, it's also me. Yeah, yeah, it's just like how you would uh, cite a a book when you're writing a paper. You need to cite the creator if you're using their content. 
right? I, exactly. And I, I, I don't think that people have come and asked you to use your word, did they, Charlotte? No, no, they haven't. Yeah. Um, but that was licensed through my old university, so uh -huh, I course. wouldn't be the one they'd come to either. <laughs> you know, now that I do think about it, the way I handle this situation is similar to Creative Commons Attribution. You think oh. we should invest in that? Let's talk about it after the podcast. Yeah. Okay, that sounds great. All right. Overall, when you use my work, it's important to make sure that you reference the original creator. Not only is this the res respectful thing to do, but it can also help foster creativity and collaboration in the creative space. I will not take payments, only honesty. It is the same case in an educational setting, except the consequence is either a zero on the assignment or failing the class altogether. A violation of a creator's rights can become legal. So it's a bit mm. more severe. You can even get jail time for that. Oh, gosh. So please don't offer me payments. Just give me honesty. Just credit my work and everything will be good to go. I am extremely thankful for my work's success and for any recognition that I may receive. I believe that by acknowledging the work of others, we can help create a culture of creativity and collaboration. Excellent. Colton, do you collaborate with other content creators yourself? Yes, I have in fact collaborated with others in the past. Like for example, with the Hearst Entertainment Volunteers. It was originally just the three of us, myself, Picklefever369, and Matt DC123. And I did get other collaborators down the line, such as Page8273, Dustin22, and her mother, Heidi Daisy. And not to mention I had a video editor named Veronica Williams, but I'm, I'm going to reference her name as Ran Out of Ideas. Shout out to you. <laughs> so, well, what could you do to enhance your content based on your experience? It's as I said, always be honest and integral amongst other creators. If you want to use their work in an inspirational piece, maybe a reaction. The simplest way to get through any copyright issue is to just ask. Nice. Just ask me and then attribute me properly. All that you need to do. That Very direct. If there was any one content creator you could collaborate with yourself, who would it be? Uh, I've, I've always envisioned myself collaborating with Mark Fire. Oh, if, if, I love him. Yes. If, if anybody famous, it would be him. If, if, if there was someone whom I knew personally, I would just like to or mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get in touch with. Perhaps hop back on that band. Huh. Perhaps make my streams a bit more memorable. Oh, who I'm knows? sure. I'm I, sure they're memorable enough already. Yes. And who knows? I might even do something where all of the Hearst Entertainment staff that ever came about up until the campaign's conclusion, we could all get together and pull off one final hurrah. That would be fun. And you know what What would make that legacy even better? If a new creator stepped up to the plate. Oh, yeah, and you pass the torch on to them. Yes. That would be. Oh, mm -hmm. great dreams. Let's hope. Yes. All right. Well, Colton, my last question for you this week is what college events or club meetings did you attend? Well, this has actually happened today. I attended the Asteroid Search for the Astronomy Club. It's kind of interesting because yeah. Professor Wagstaff had the Astronomy Club going for a bit. And after the pandemic, the club seemed to have disbanded. A bit. But he's jumping on that bandwagon again with the Space and Astronomy Club. I love they're, that things they're, are coming back. They're ju yeah. he's, he's joining force with another club. That's what oh. I'm trying to communicate. He needed to utilize the Space Club to get his club back on its feet. And it worked smooth. I enjoy watching the Astronauts by a presentation. And so there was this program that the people that was doing the events, they used it to find asteroids, and they labeled the asteroids. And we were able to see the asteroids by four images. Mm, nice. And so these images cycle on until we notice a pattern in between those images. Oh, okay. And now... So it was pretty interesting. I, I enjoyed watching them, but it was a shame that the professor didn't get to go. He had other things to attend to, but at least I got to keep going. We're going to do the big time watches next week. Oh, okay. I 
heard on Facebook, so I don't know how true this is. Yes. Um, but that there's a large asteroid that's passing by Earth and it's going to be like the first time in hundreds of years. Uh, you've seen that too? I think I saw this too. Have you heard about that in your uh, club? I, I don't think so. Not quite just yet because I recently became a part of them through attending that event specifically. So <laughs> I guess I could say I'm involved in more than three, clu- and three clubs per se. But however, two of them I'm not currently actively involved in. Mm. But just know that I've been involved in three. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully maybe in the future you'll talk about that asteroid and then you can update us on it with more information. Exactly. So on a scale of one to 10, Colton, how well do you think this will help you to get involved in the Oregon Tech or the Clint uh, Falls community? A nine. And al- allow me to provide an explanation for it. It was a bit difficult to see the asteroids go by. Nevertheless, I recall that an asteroid has a head and a tail. You need to search for the head and tail. The average person would, not, would need a telescope to peer that far out into the sky. Under the right circumstances, you can see the head and tail traveling across the stars, moving at speeds similar to the speed of light. If you were to try to see one up close, it would be too fast for you to see. Plus, you would need a spacesuit to get into zero gravity, no oxygen. But it's just little things. Yes, <laughs> yes. But I'm sure you could just you could just shout YOLO, and it would slow down for you. <laughs> That's great. Needless to say, all these asteroids pass by and such. It's yeah. just astounding. Has anyone done any space research over the course of their college career? Uh, I I have not, but I do know in Klamath Falls there there is a group of individuals that all have very tiny telescopes, mm-hmm. and I believe it might be a Facebook group. You might be interested in it. Ooh, you'll have but to- like occasionally. When there's a good meteor showers, they go out to State Sports Park and they plant their telescopes and then they go around and they spot or like Venus is close. I, I honestly really don't know a whole lot about space, so. Um, okay, hi. But they get host that. Uh, they host events and I think you would be really interested in it because Ooh. even if you don't have a telescope, they're super nice and mm-hmm. everyone will let you uh, look through your telescope. You just can't move it because they okay. they always. Have Right. right. Just right. Okay, you'll you'll have to send me the name of the group by an e. Okay, I'll have to find it. Yeah, yes. I think my mom's a part of it. <laughs> oh, well, if, if I see her, I'll tell you. Tell her you said hello. Oh, please do. Of course, you you have my word on that. <laughs> and I guess while we're on the subject of college and studies, the top the midterms are underway. Oh. And so I've I've recently been given the assignment of filling out the midterm assessment. Mm-hmm. Which, is, yeah. which is a requirement for all top students. Yes. Every, every midterm, we have to fill out one of these by Friday of week six, in which I have done a pretty good job at. It. I've already gotten three of my classes all filled out, which is Math 111, Chemistry 201, and 204. All my professors are saying that I'm doing a pretty good job. And not only do they, do they get to fill out their concerns, but I... The students also get to fill out theirs. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, in my chemistry 201 class, the grading on the lab was a bit delayed. Mm-hmm. And the professor's explanation for that was the, the labs usually take way long to grade. I mean, like, every every lab has, we have to write out our labs. We have a pre-lab that we must complete before the lab starts, and then a lab report that's due by tomorrow at midnight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's hard on the teachers, so we got to give them grace as well. Of you course. Know, as, yes. as you expect grace as a student, mm-hmm. if something were to come up, you also have to give grace to the teacher. They're right. They're very busy, too. Yes, busy, busy, busy. Mm-hmm. Aren't we all, especially myself? I hardly find a chance to make time for myself, but Valentine's Day is coming up, and I'm pretty excited. Ooh. Do you have big Valentine's Day? It's on a weekend, Valentine's Day weekend, I'm thinking about taking somebody to dinner. Oh, that's oh. nice. There's lots of places around here. Uh, yes, but I'm thinking about taking the person who I'm going with to Italia. That's one of my oh. favorite restaurants. Oh, yes. So delicious. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking of going there with whomever I'm going with, that special somebody, and just all around having a good time. I have everything planned out. I have the chocolates, flowers. 
just everything ready. That sounds sweet. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sounds I'm like be it's a gonna full be full-on gentleman. Yes, a no. very special. Yeah. <laughs> and we're out of time. It was a great episode, I feel. Yes, and we got some key points and issues out of the way as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so on episode nine, we're going to find a new guest. And it was a pleasure having you around, Jennifer, Dr. Wilson. <laughs> it was a pleasure being here. Yes, yeah. of course. And needless to say, like I said, if you want to use my work, don't offer payment. Give me honesty. That's all that I ask, really. <laughs> and on episode nine, who knows? My dad have that, might have that welding shop ready to go. Oh, yeah. And you'll have to update us. Mm hmm Of course. And I'll even update you on the Valentine's Day situation as well. Yes. So that way, none of you are too concerned that I'm just going to be working myself to death over the course of Valentine's Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reason why I'm choosing Valentine's Day weekend is because Valentine's Day falls on a Tuesday. Mm. Can't necessarily have a fancy dinner on that day. It's, it's not the best hard. day this year. Yeah. No. Well, I had a lot of fun. Wouldn't you both agree? Yes. Yeah. It was yes. so nice. Thank you again for, for joining us this mm -hmm. week. Of Absolutely. course. We Anytime. loved your insights. Yes. Yeah. And thank you folks so much for tuning in. And remember, there will be disappointments in life. But us humans have the power to turn those disappointments into accomplishments. This is Wayne Z 7 a.k.a. Colton W. Hurst, a.k.a. Fourth Wall Breaking Women Army. Signing out, folks. Good night, everyone. Good night.